We've all been hearing a lot about the weight loss benefits of GLP-1 receptor agonists, but it's important to remember that they're also diabetes medications. And if you have a patient who's on an insulin secretagogue and or insulin, it's important to remember that you need to adjust those medications in order to avoid hypoglycemia as you're starting and up titrating the GLP-1 receptor agonist. Now, this isn't really cookbook in the sense that you really got to think about each patient, but I'll tell you what I do. First off, I try really hard to have most of my patients on CGM because if they're on CGM, I can really look at the trends to see what's happening as I'm adding in a GLP-1 receptor agonist. But if they're not on CGM, it's helpful if they test a fasting glucose level and then sometimes perhaps a postprandial, although it's harder to get people to do, because you want to know whether you're to reduce the basal insulin or the prandial insulin. But regardless of testing, you need to review with the patient signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia and how they would treat it if it occurred. And in a patient on insulin, you may want to make sure they have glucagon at home because there have been episodes of severe hypoglycemia that occurred when a GLP-1 receptor agonist was added to insulin. So as a rule of thumb, I start out by looking at the A1C. If the A1C is greater than 8%, I'm probably not going to do too much reduction in the insulin secretagogue or the insulin right off the bat. But what I'll do is I'll watch the patient as they begin to respond to the GLP-1 receptor agonist and then start tapering down the insulin if their glucose levels fall. I often reduce the prandial insulin levels first because you're gonna start seeing the patient eating less and be at increased risk for hypoglycemia in between meals. And if I start seeing the fasting glucose fall, then I'll start reducing the basal insulin. And usually I reduce the doses by 10 to 20%. But as I said, in somebody who starts out with a higher A1C, I don't right off the bat reduce the insulin. I watch what happens as the dose is increased. And as the dose is increased in someone who's on an oral insulin secretagogue, I'll tend to cut that dose in half as I see glucose levels coming down. On the other hand, if someone's starting A1C is less than eight, I might start off by reducing their prandial insulin by 50% and maybe their basal insulin by 10 to 20%, depending on what their glucose levels look like. Because I think patients who are closer to target on insulin and or a sulfonyl reagent are going to be those who are at increased risk for going low. Ideally, one can taper the patient off of their insulin and if not entirely off of their insulin, off of their prandial insulin, because it's a lot easier to give basal insulin and a once weekly GLP-1 receptor agonist than to be on a multiple daily insulin regimen. And potentially you'll be able to taper your patient off their insulin secretagogue as well. The important thing to remember is that there's more than one moving target. So you're up titrating the GLP-1 receptor agonist or the GIP GLP-1 receptor agonist, and you're down titrating the insulin secretagogue and or the insulin. And what you wanna do is to down titrate in gradual steps in order to keep ahead of any risk for hypoglycemia. And usually that is done in slow steps at say 10 to 20% at a time, but it also means you pay attention to your patient and that you may need to follow them every week or two, particularly if their A1C starts out below eight, where they're likely to be at more risk for hypoglycemia. But if you pay attention to this process, you should be able to get your patient to a better point, hopefully on less medication that can cause hypoglycemia and onto a medication that not only improves glucose, but it helps with weight reduction it improves cardiovascular outcomes and may have a renal benefit. Thank you.